You got a quick drive, 15 minutes. You might want a short story. Maybe some Edgar Allan Poe, some Jack London. Maybe a little O. Henry. Whatever you fancy, I'll be reading short stories, fables, and tales that I think are interesting and I'm putting out on this podcast. Come back for a weekly short story and some fables sprinkled in between. Narrated by yours truly, John Wilkins. American Fairy Tales by Lyman Frank Baum Story 2 The Glass Dog An accomplished wizard once lived on the top floor of a tenement house and passed his time in thoughtful study and studious thought. Passed his time in thoughtful study and studious thought. What he didn't know about wizardry was hardly worth knowing for he possessed all the books and recipes of all the wizards who had lived before him, and moreover, he had invented several wizardments himself. This admiral person would have been completely happy, but for the numerous interruptions to his studies caused by folks who came to consult him about their troubles, in which he was not interested, and by the loud knocks of the iceman, the milkman, the baker boy, the laundryman, and the peanut woman. He never dealt with any of these people, but they rapped at his door every day to see him about this or that or to try and sell him their wares. Just when he was most deeply interested in his books or engaged in watching the bubbling of a cauldron, there would come a knock at his door, and after sending the intruder away, he always found he had lost his train of thought or ruined his compound. At length, these eruptions arose his anger, and he decided he must have a dog to keep people from his door. He didn't know where to find a dog, but in the next room lived a poor glass blower who he had a slight acquaintance. So he went into the man's apartment and asked, Where can I find a dog? What sort of dog? inquired the glass blower. A good dog. One that will bark at people and drive them away. One that will be no trouble to keep and won't expect to be fed. One that has no fleas and is neat in his habits. One that will obey me when I speak with him. In short, a good dog, said the wizard. Such a dog is hard to find, returned the glass blower, who was busy making a blue glass flower pot with a pink glass rose bush in it, having green glass leaves and yellow glass roses. The wizard watched him thoughtfully. Why, can you not blow a dog out of glass? He asked presently. I can, declared the glass blower, but it will not bark at people, you know. Oh, I'll fix that easily enough, replied the other. If I could not make a glass dog bark, I would be a mighty poor wizard. Well, well, if you can use a glass dog, I'll be pleased to blow one for you. Only you must pay me for my work. Certainly, agreed the wizard. But I have none of that hard stuff you call money. You must take some of my wares in exchange. The glass blower considered the matter for a moment. Could you give me something to cure my rheumatism? He asked. Oh, yes, easily. Then it's a bargain. I'll start that dog at once. What color glass shall I use? Pink is a pretty color, said the wizard. And it's unusual for a dog, isn't it? Very, answered the glass blower. But it shall be pink. So the wizard went back to his studies and the glass blower began to make the dog. The next morning he entered the wizard's room with the glass dog under his arm and set it carefully upon the table. It was a beautiful pink in color with a fine coat of spun glass and about its neck was a twisted blue glass ribbon. Its eyes were specks of black glass and sparkled intelligently as do many of the glass eyes worn by men. The wizard expressed himself pleased with the glass blower's skills and at once handed him a small vial. This will cure your rheumatism, he said. But the vial is empty, protested the glass blower. Oh no, there is one drop of liquid in it, was the wizard's reply. Will one drop cure my rheumatism? inquired the glass blower in wonder. Most certainly, this is a marvelous remedy. 
The one drop contained in the vial will cure instantly any kind of disease ever known to humanity. Therefore, it is especially good for rheumatism. But guard it well, for it is the only drop of its kind in the world, and I've forgotten the recipe. Thank you, said the glass flower, and went back to his room. Then the wizard cast the wizzy spell and mumbled several learned words in the wizardy's language over the glass dog, whereupon the little animal first wagged its tail from side to side, then winked his left eye knowingly, and at last began barking in a most frightful manner. That is, when you stop to consider the noise came from a pink glass dog. There is something almost astonishing in the magic arts of wizards, unless, of course, you know how to do the things yourself when you're not expected to be surprised by them. The wizard was as delighted as a school teacher at the success of his spell, although he was not astonished. Immediately, he placed the dog outside his door, where it should bark at anyone who dared to knock and disturb the studies of its master. The glass blower, on returning to his room, decided not to use the one drop of the wizard's cure-all just then. My rheumatism is better today, he reflected and I would be wise to save the medicine for a time when I am very ill, when it will be more service to me. So he placed the vial on his cupboard and went to work blowing more roses out of glass. Presently, he happened to think that the medicine might not keep, so he started to ask the wizard about it. But when he reached the door, the glass dog barked so fiercely that he dared not knock and returned in great haste to his own room. Indeed, the poor man was quite upset at so unfriendly a reception from the dog he had himself so carefully and skillfully made. The next morning, as he read the newspaper, he noticed an article that the beautiful Miss Midas, the richest young lady in town, was very ill, and the doctors had given up hope on her recovery. The glassblower, although miserably poor, hard-working, and homely in feature, was a man of ideas. He suddenly recollected his precious medicine and determined to use it to better advantage than relieving his own ills. He dressed himself in his best clothes, brushed his hair and combed his whiskers, washed his hands and tied his necktie, blackened his shoes and sponged his vest, and put the vial of magic cure-all in his pocket. Next, he locked the door, went downstairs, and walked through the streets to the grand mansion where the wealthy Miss Midas resided. The butler opened the door and said, No soap, no chroma, no vegetables, no hair oil, no book, no baking powder. My young lady is dying and we're supplied for the funeral. The glassblower was grieved at being taken for a peddler. My friend, he began proudly. But the butler interrupted him, saying, No tombstones either. There's a family graveyard, and the monument's built. The graveyard won't be needed if you will permit me to speak, said the glassblower. No doctors, sir. They've given up on my young lady, and she's given up on the doctor, continued the butler calmly. I'm no doctor, returned the glassblower. Nor are the others, but what is your errand? I called to cure the young lady by means of magical compound. Step in, please, and take a seat in the hall. I'll speak to the housekeeper, said the butler more politely. So he spoke to the housekeeper, and the housekeeper mentioned the matter to the steward, and the steward consulted the chef, and the chef kissed the lady's maid and sent her to see the stranger. Thus are the wealthy hedged around, with ceremony even when dying. When the lady's maid heard from the glass blower that he had a medicine that would cure her mistress, she said, I'm glad you came. But, he said, if I restore the mistress's health, she must marry me. I'll make the inquiry and see if she's willing, answered the maid, and went at once to consult Miss Midas. The young lady didn't hesitate an instant. I'd marry any old thing rather than die, she cried. Bring him here at once. So the glassblower came, poured the magic drop into a little water, gave it to the patient, and the next minute Miss Midas was as well as she had ever been in her life. Dear me, she exclaimed, I've got an engagement at the Fritter's reception tonight. Bring my pearl-colored silk, Marie, and I will begin my toilet at once. 
and don't forget to cancel the order for the funeral flowers in your morning gown. But Miss Midas, remonstrated the glassblower, who stood by, you promised to marry me if I cured you. I know, said the young lady, but we must have time to make proper announcements in the society paper and have the wedding cards engraved. Call tomorrow and we'll talk it over. The glassblower had none pressed her favorably as a husband, and she was glad to find an excuse for getting rid of him for a time, and she did not want to miss the fritter's reception. Yet the man went home filled with joy, for he thought his stratagem had succeeded, and he was about to marry a rich wife who would keep him in luxury forever afterward. The first thing he did when reaching his room was smash his glassblowing tools and throw them out the window. He then sat down and figured out ways to spend his wife's money. The following day he called upon Miss Midas, who was reading a novel and eating chocolates, as happy as if she had never been ill in her life. Where did you get the magic compound that cured me? She asked. From a learned wizard, said he, and then, thinking it would interest her, he told her he made a glass dog for the wizard and how it barked and kept everybody from bothering him. How delightful, she said. I've always wanted a glass dog that can bark, but there is only one in the world, he answered and it belongs to the wizard. You must buy it for me, said the lady. The wizard cares nothing for money, replied the glassblower. Then you must steal it for me, she retorted. I can never live happily another day unless I have a glass dog that can bark. The glassblower was much distressed at this, but said he would see what he could do, for a man should always try to please his wife, and Miss Midas had promised to marry him within a week. On his way home, he purchased a heavy sack, and when he passed the wizard's door and the pink glass dog ran out to bark at him, he threw the sack over the dog, tied the opening with a piece of twine, and carried him away to his own room. The next day, he sent the sack by messenger boy to Miss Midas with his compliments, and later that afternoon, he called upon her in person, feeling quite sure he would be received with gratitude for stealing the dog she so greatly desired. But when he came to the door and the butler opened it, what was his amazement to see was the glass dog rush out and begin barking at him furiously. Call off your dog, he shouted in terror. I can't, sir, answered the butler. My young lady has ordered the glass dog to bark whenever you call here. You'd better look out, sir, he added, for if it bites you, you may have glassophobia. This so frightened the glass blower that he went away hurriedly, but he stopped at the drugstore and put his last dime in the telephone box so he could talk to Miss Midas without being bitten by the dog. Give me PALF 6742, he called. Hello, what is it? said a voice. I want to speak to Miss Midas, said the glass blower. Presently, a sweet voice said, This is Miss Midas. What is it? Why have you treated me so cruelly and set the glass dog on me? asked the poor fellow. Well, to tell you the truth, said the lady, I don't like your looks. Your cheeks are pale and baggy. Your hair is coarse and long. Your eyes are small and red. Your hands are big and rough. And you're bow-legged. But I can't help my looks, pleaded the glass blower. And you really promised to marry me. If you were better looking, I'd keep my promise, she returned, but under the circumstances, you are no fit mate for me, and unless you keep from my mansion, I will set my glass dog on you. Then she dropped the phone and would have nothing more to say. The miserable glassblower went home with a heart bursting with disappointment and began tying a rope to the bedpost by which to hang himself. Someone knocked on the door, and upon opening it, he saw the wizard. The next time he called upon Miss Midas, there was no dog to bark at him, and when the young lady saw him, she fell in love with his beauty at once. If only you were a count or a prince, she sighed, I'd willingly marry you. But I am a prince, he answered, the prince of dog blowers. Ah, she said, then if you're willing to accept an allowance of four dollars a week, I'll order the wedding cards engraved. The man hesitated, but when he thought of the rope hanging from the bedpost, he consented to the term. So they were married, and the bride was very jealous of her husband's beauty and led him a dog's life, 
so he managed to get in debt and made her miserable in turn. As for the glass dog, the wizard sent him barking again, by means of his wizardness, and put him outside the door. I suppose he is there yet, and am rather sorry, for I should like to consult the wizard about the moral of the story. Another interesting short story, fable, moral that doesn't exist in this one. Um, I think that if you're always craving beauty uh, so that you get the acceptance of others or get what you want, then you're never really going to get what you want and be happy. It's possible that that's what they're talking about here. There's 12 of these stories. Each one of them I think that Lyman I think that Lyman F. Baum was just having fun with these. I read a a review that they said that they weren't as cool as the Wizard of Oz, which of course they weren't. But uh that's The Glass Dog, story two of twelve in American Fairy Tales by Lyman Frank Baum. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next story.